Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to my channel. It is Heart DFS. Today we have another NBA slate breakdown. If you're new to my channel, my name's Heart. Um, welcome. I make daily NBA prize pick videos as well as daily NBA slate breakdowns on DraftKings. So a lot of content for you guys to enjoy. Um, we've been doing well on prize picks, so I'll have a video out later today for that. Uh, we went four to f three out of four yesterday, four to five, and five out of six, depending on what plays in line you took. So it was a great day yesterday. Uh, we've been doing well over the past uh, week, so make sure to follow me there on Twitter at HeartDFS. Uh, I put up my you know prize pick plays, my DFS cores, which have been pretty solid. Um, yesterday was kind of a letdown. But, you know, doing well overall, especially on prize picks. So really, really looking forward to doing the video today. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at HeartDFS. Hit the like button, subscribe, uh, comment, hit the notification bell. I do appreciate it. And let's go over my lineup uh, for today. It's going to be a quick video. Um, I'm trying to get this out there as it's, you know, midday. So we have Chris Paul talked about how it's a great bounce back opportunity for him. The game, unfortunately, blew out. Uh, he did get his, you know, normal assist mark, but he wasn't aggressive at all. On the offensive end, stayed out of foul trouble, but just another horrendous game. I really hate Chris Paul right now. Uh, it screwed me every time, every pretty much every game this series. He's screwed me on this and prize picks. Victor Oladipo talked about how I really liked him as a value play with Lowry being ruled out, 50% owned. You know, did okay, decent. Cam Johnson, another value play I really talked about that I really liked. Kind of got an extended run with the blowout, which was nice to see. So he did uh, did pretty decent as well. Niang, um, I didn't feel good with going with Niang or Thibel at all, but there was just no value under like 3,500, 3,600 in that range. And so I was kind of just forced to go that if I wanted to play Chris Paul, Old Depot, Embiid, Donchins. Uh, so yeah, it kind of got screwed with value. It wasn't the smartest way to go, but I was just like, kind of just like, it was like a dart throw. I was like, if this doesn't work out, then oh well. And but if it you know did work out, it would have been great. Probably would have got solo first if they, you know they did decent. My other guys obviously played decent as well, but it didn't. So Chris Paul kind of failed me. So it didn't even matter at that point if Yang and uh, Flyball did well. Joel Embiid, 13% owned. I don't think he got close to like 18% owned in any of the contests. Just super low owned. That's what you'd want to take advantage of is the low ownership. They can't stop him on the Heat. It's just Doc Rivers sucks as a coach. He's horrendous as a coach. They only gave him the ball, what, I think it was four times in the first quarter? Like, what are you doing? Like, four times. You're basically you're the MVP of the league. I know Jokic won it, but you can argue Joel should have won it. Four times you're going to give him the ball in the first quarter? That's it? He plays the whole first quarter, too. That's 12 minutes. You want to give him the ball four times. Horrendous coaching. He picked it up in the third quarter. He got, like, eight straight points, but... At that point, it was just too late. Um, just super frustrating. Joel and Bede Vader should have got absolutely punished the last game in the you know the game before, but they got bailed out. Extremely lucky. Doc River sucks. If they lose this series, he be he should be fired right on the spot, right as the timer hit zero in the last game. So, Doc Rivers hate him, and B just got absolutely screwed in terms of that. He also got injured twice in that game, which is very frustrating. Just wasn't Joel and Bede. Uh, Luca got blown out. You know, was doing well on pace to do his, you know, average amount. But obviously the, the blow kind of hurt. Uh, Thibault, obviously, I talked about him with uh, Niang. Just didn't want to go there, but I did. And it didn't work out, obviously. And then talked about Gabe Vincent. Now, he did get some um, blowout run, which really helped to get there. But talked about him as value. So, I think my core plays were Paul. Let's go back and look real fast. I think it was from the video, it was like Paul... Embiid, Luca, and I think Cam Johnson. So, I mean, Luca obviously didn't do the best, but he still kind of, you know, paid off a little bit. Cam Johnson did well. And Embiid and Paul just, you know, they didn't do anything. If they would have had great games, it would have been a great core, but just a little unfortunate the ball didn't roll our way today. But on to today's slate. Uh, a nice little four gamer. Obviously, Milwaukee, Boston, Warriors, Memphis. Starting off on the Milwaukee side. I like Giannis, 11-6. I mean, you know what you're getting with Giannis. It's, you know, he's going to shoot the ball probably 30-plus times. You know, rebounding the ball a ton, getting the assist. Can't get to a block or steal, too. So, if you want to pay up for Giannis, you know, I'm fine with that. It's just kind of find those value plays, which, obviously, with the Memphis guys, it does open up some uh, areas to get to Giannis. Drew Holiday, you know, it's the same thing with him. I've mentioned every game. Playing in about 40 minutes, shooting the ball 20-plus times. Hasn't shot the ball well at all this series. 
8 to 20, 7 to 20, 11 to 30, 5 to 22, and he's still putting up, you know, 40 or more fantasy points. So if we're going to get a good game of shooting from him, one of these games, and I think it's today, 8,200, really, really like him today. Um, I like Bobby Portis kind of as like a, a, a dart throw. I know I talked to him in the last game. He uh, came out in the first quarter, put up like two points. I think it was like five rebounds and like an assist. And I was like, oh, like, you know, he, he wasn't shooting the ball well. I think he was like one of five. But I was like, oh, he's going to get some run. No. Coach Bud goes with Brooke Lopez, plays him almost 30 minutes, allows Al Horford to have like a, a playoff career best, look like the greatest player ever, and carry the Celtics to the win. Why? Because Brooke Lopez is the most unathletic and slowest player in the league, yet you're going to have him try to guard Al Horford, who's very, very versatile, very mobile. What is that? What coaching is that? You're going to put Brooke Lopez on Al Horford. I know, you know, some guys got switched off on like Giannis, but like mostly Brooke Lopez is on Al Horford. That's a mismatch. I would take that all day if I was the Celtics and, you know, Al Horford took advantage of that. It's, it makes no sense, but I could see a position today where Bud finally realizes, hey, maybe we should put Bobby. He's way better at being able to switch off on the other guys as well. If they do pick and rolls, you know, he's decent at defense. Obviously, he gives up some pounds to Al Horford, but he can switch off on guys like Tatum and Brown. Obviously, he's not going to be able to stay with them, but he's going to stay with them a lot better than Brooke Lopez. He's also a better three-point shooter, probably a better rebounder, and he's way more energy. So I, I just don't understand the Brooke Lopez play. It's just not, not a good look. Obviously, when they play him 30 minutes, what do they do? They lose. So I, I do see an area where Bobby Portis maybe gets back to his normal amount of minutes and shots. And if he does, he's going to be super low owned, low owned at 5,500. So I don't mind taking a shot there. Brooke Lopez, if you think he's going to get 30 minutes, which it looks like he probably will. Um, I don't think he's going to shoot as well as he's done. But if you want to go there, you know, I don't mind it at his price. It's just, I just don't understand the reason why they're playing him. Uh, Grayson Allen, like they, taking a shot on him uh, today. I know he's been horrible this series. He was in the starting lineup last game. Assume he'll probably be in it again today. I do expect a bounce back spot for him here. I, he hasn't been hitting his threes at all. I think one of these games, you know, he's a good three-point shooter. I think one of these games he's going to catch on fire from three. And I think maybe today is that day. So I don't mind taking a shot on him at 3,900. Uh, should be pretty low owned just because of how bad he's done. Pat Connaughton going to be super chalky. So I like, you know, Grace Snell is that pivot play off Pat Connaughton. But if you want to go to Pat, don't mind it. I know he's been doing well, you know, in the playoffs um, most of the games, but obviously there's a few where he can definitely, you know, put up like 17 fantasy points, 16, and just 10, just have a bad game. So not 100% safe, but obviously a tad bit safer than Allen as of right now. But don't mind that pivot to Allen over Connaughton. Wes Matthews does get some minutes, uh, 29, kind of had like a ceiling game at 19 and a half fantasy points. Don't think he to go there. Um, my computer just freezes. Oh, I don't get it. Why it freezes. Brand new. So one sec, guys. But yeah, just super frustrating uh, coaching from these games the other day. Uh, where is George Hill? Questionable again. It looks like he's probable. Uh, played 23 minutes. Obviously not super involved, so don't think it's go there. Boston side, love Tatum again. Talked about him in the bounce back spot. Played him, and he got you 55 fantasy points. Uh, you know, he's the whole team shot well, didn't shoot well from three. Usually he does. So I think you look forward to him shooting uh, well from three at home today. Going to play the minutes. Obviously, the main guy for the Celtics really like him today as a, a bring back against Drew Holiday. Like Jalen Brown as well. Kind of had like a, a floor game last game. Didn't play the best. Had a lot of foul trouble. Um, so yeah, he didn't do much kind of, you know, relied on Tatum and Horford. So do like uh, Brown a little bit in this spot. I'm assuming the ownership kind of, you know, shifts to Tatum over Brown. So I don't mind getting into either one of them. Horford will probably be super popular. I don't mind getting into him. You know, the price has increased to 7,300. But if you look at the past three games, obviously he's done amazing. The minutes just steadily increase. He shot it really, really well. So maybe there's a, a little... A little room for disappointment when it comes to a shot today, but you know I, I don't mind riding the hot streak. 7,300 for a guy who's playing about 40 minutes, shooting the ball well, especially if Brooke Lopez is guarding him. You know Horford should be a, be able to have a good game. Marcus Smart, you know, his played 41 minutes. Talked about him in Prize Picks. That was a good you know bounce back spot for him. Did well, 36 fantasy points. I expect him to be pretty popular today. 
just because at 5,900, you have a guy who could get definitely get you in you know, the 30s into even the 40s fancy point range. Going to play probably 40 minutes. Is good at getting you know some steals and blocks. So don't mind him at 5,900. He's probably my second favorite play today, kind of tied with Al Horford for the side. Rob Williams is questionable, so this is news we definitely have to watch. If he plays, he's probably slotted for around 20 to 25 minutes at most. I don't know if you have to play him. That knee uh, injury is just a little a little concerning. I know it's just like swelling, but if he's in, um, I guess you could play him, but I, I probably wouldn't. I'd just stick with Horford. It would definitely take Grant Williams out of the starting lineup. He'd probably still see around you know 33 minutes because even with Robert Williams, he was coming off the bench seeing that amount of time. Uh, last game, disappointing game, three of nine, foul trouble, didn't shoot well, didn't play well. So do expect a bounce back spot. You know, his price is up to 4,600. So don't mind getting there. Obviously not the the best value play. But if Williams is out, Derek White is, should see a little bit more minutes off the bench. Kind of got extended because of the Jalen Brown foul trouble. And yeah, got extended. You know, he's hitting a shot. So I think normally we should see around 20 minutes. Uh, obviously there's some foul trouble, you know, Williams is out that definitely leaves some room for Derek White to come off as like the sixth man and play about 20 minutes at most uh or like his floor is like 20 minutes I'd say his ceiling is about as you can see 30 ish around there so looking like an, a, a decent you know dart throw play today um Pritchard gets some run but not too involved and then Tice got some run but obviously not too involved either that does it for me on the Boston side Warriors Memphis I talked about how this game could be a blowout and surprisingly it wasn't the yeah, I know Memphis has done well they're like 21 and 5 without Ja and so they kept it close at home or at Golden State's home which is surprising now it's at Memphis um I think it still stands that this game could blow out like especially that Ja is pretty much done for the whole playoffs I, I just don't see how Memphis is going to be able to handle uh, the whole Golden State Warriors side. So I really like Steph at 9,500. You know, really hasn't had a ceiling game recently. You know, 57 is, or 52, you know, 51, 59 is obviously great. That's kind of getting close to a ceiling game. But we've seen Steph, you know, go for 40, 50 real-life points. So really like him today. Uh, obviously, there's some blowout risk. Clay Thompson. You know, if you want to take a dart throw and like a, a guy, obviously his price isn't the best, but he's one of those who could definitely win you the slate if you play him and he does really well, just because of how low owned he's going to be. I actually have a decent amount of interest in Jordan Poole. Um, he's getting the, you know, the minutes, the shots are there. He's getting the peripherals, which you do really like to see, and he's, you know, really involved. So I know he's kind of been score independent recently. If he's, you know, hitting his, his shot, hitting his, if he's getting the points, you know, his peripherals have kind of been down. If his peripherals are up, his points have kind of been down, so I don't mind taking a shot on him at 6,900 today. Just it's a solid play. Draymond Green, just not doing it for me. Not shooting the ball at all, so I don't mind if you you don't want to play him, but I don't think you have to. I'd rather take a shot on a guy like Andrew Wiggins. You know, his minutes were up just because of the, you know, the game wasn't a blowout, but obviously there's some risk. But, you know, he looks like a decent play. 6K. If you want to go the mid-range build today, Otto Porter Jr. should see about 20 to 25 minutes obviously been hitting this three shooting really well so if you expect that you know i don't mind getting into him otherwise if he's not hitting his three you know his fantasy points would probably be half of that so 4200 if you want to go there you can looney played some minutes because of uh steven adams should see probably 15 minutes i don't think he had to force that kind of played uh his ceiling in that in the terms of points in the 15 minutes and then memphis side obviously jaws out which really sucks so we got, I think I just messed this up. Let's do it. Salary. Okay, there we are. Jaron Jackson Jr. You know, the minutes are there. They really force fed him the ball. They'll probably do the same thing today. Obviously, he's the biggest guy on the floor. So it's a little bit of mismatch, but he's just not the best shooter, as I've, you know, kind of harped on this whole series. Does have some room for upside. Obviously, got five blocks, which is a little bit of an outlier, and then two steals. So that's what, 14 extra fancy points right there. Don't really expect that today. But there is room for him to have a ceiling game today. I just, I do feel like this game will probably blow out. Desmond Bain, I hate that dude. Why play? Why play if you your back is that injured where you're going to shoot 10 times, 7, 10, 8? You play 37 minutes, especially in the fourth. He just stood on the three-point line, got the ball, just passed it off, did nothing. 
why are you playing? There's no point of you being out there. So, I, I mean, in DFS terms, I guess he's playable. You know, he's playing the minutes. His price is good. It's just he's not involved. He's not looking to play. His back is hurt. So if you want to go there, you can, but it's just super risky. Rather get to Dylan Brooks, you know, he's not hurt. He's played 39 minutes, shot the ball 19 times, didn't shoot well. Got you eight assists, which you do like to see, but I do expect that to drop the act down to like his two to four range. Can't get you some boards. It just comes down if he's shooting the ball well. So I don't mind getting to him today at 5,600, even if it does blow out. Do expect him to probably see 25 to 30 at the, at the least if it blows out and more, obviously, if it stays close. Tyus Jones is going to be super chalky again today. Should see at least 25 minutes if it's not a blowout. You know, obviously way more if it's close. So I really like him as your value player today. Probably will be 75% owned, if not more. Um, who else? Brandon Clark, do like taking a shot on him, especially if Triple J gets in foul trouble. Do think he can get, you know, close to that 30-minute mark, especially. So I don't mind taking, you know, a dart throw on him. Going to be super low owned today. Mountain. Huge, uh, huge bust in terms of just ownership. I think he has like 50 plus percent owned. Only played nine minutes, didn't play well. I do think you can go to the well here. Again, on Melton, ownership is going to drop in half at least on him. You know, he can play. I don't know why he, he didn't play. You know, they had rather keep Desmond Bain out there. Kyle Anderson got lucky. If he wasn't playing a bit well, I do think Melton would have got his normal amount of minutes. So I don't mind getting to Melton again today at 4,500. Kyle Anderson. Pretty much almost put up two fantasy points per minute last game. 23 minutes, 7 of 8, 1 of 2 from 3, 8 rebounds, 2 assists, block, 2 steals. Stuff the stat sheet. Don't expect the same thing. Price came up 1,000. I don't, I don't have faith in slow-mo at all. But I'd rather take a shot on a guy like um, Steven Adams. Not sure why he played 27 minutes, but he did really well. So if he's going to get you, you know, 25 plus minutes or even like 20, he's really going to pay off the 3,400 price tag. It's just... I don't know if they go back to him today. You know, it, he doesn't really do much for them. Obviously, he can rebound, but there's really no point of him being in. Um, just a mismatch on the defensive end when he has to try to guard guys like Draymond, Steph, Wiggins, all that. They're just way too quick for him. But I don't mind him as like a dart throw today at 3,400, obviously. And then Zaire Williams played 18 minutes. If this game does blow out, he could see more. You know, he's not afraid to shoot the ball. He's a little three-point dependent. But, you know, 3,300 for a guy who's probably getting to get you at least 12 fantasy points at the you know as this floor his ceiling's way more than that so i don't mind him as a, a nice value play today as well uh that pretty much does it for me today obviously stacking the first game is a, a lot safer than the second game but the ownership is obviously going to be on all those milwaukee and boston guys and it's gonna be a lot lighter on the golden state guys and a few of the memphis guys obviously not tyus jones or brooks but the other guys so this is kind of what I'm looking forward to uh, as a as core for today. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, HeartDFS. Um, we'll keep you guys updated on my core. And yeah, that does it for me. Hit the like button, subscribe, comment. Do appreciate all the support. And I'll see you guys.